coming back to school with me We could have done it all so easily Hi, my name is Craig Thompson Wood. I'm your host on Teaching with Board Games. Here today to take a look at Ono 99 by Mattel. Now, Ono 99 is a new game in the Uno family of games. Its um, cards look very similar to Uno. How similar is it to Uno? Well, let me take you to the table and I'll show you how it's played before we look at the report card and before I give you my thoughts on it. So once you've taken your Ono 99 game out of the box, this is what it's going to look like when you put the two decks together. So that's the starting box. And I don't think I'm going to be getting it back into the box. Uh, you can see my fat fingers have already ripped it open. So and I know similar games like this that I have in this classroom, the students have already like destroyed the box, trying to get them back in again. Uh, so I'm thinking of finding a container, a nice solid container to keep them in so that it's just sturdier and uh, just something that's going to keep the cards in one spot and all together so it's because um, this this is not going to do very well afterwards um, so let's before I deal out the cards let's just take a look at the cards so you know what to expect in the game and how it works so this game is mostly made up of these numbers and these numbers are you're making as a group a running total of these numbers so this player plays one card it's a 10 three next player plays a 10 so now the total is 13. the point of the game is to not let that running total go 99 or above so the highest you can go is 98 and i will show you some things that we were doing to um, help us to because what we were doing as one long strip at first and kept having to go back and re-add all the numbers all the way down the line and it just got to be really arduous my wife suggested a running total on a piece of paper and I thought that was a good idea but I'll show you in a moment what we eventually settled with and I like this one for a few reasons which I'll talk about so there are those different cards so like I said this is the first one here like most of the cards these orange numbers you also have these these are like not in regular Uno would be pick up two this is play two so you're playing two cards so you'd have to there's the person who's next playing number cards who's not playing another card with no numbers on it so the, if one person got this, they may play a 10 and a three for a total of 13. Uh, at times it's going to be difficult to have to play two. So it's, you know, that's what these cards could be troublesome. Now we had played originally that if you play two, the next person plays two, no matter what. So if uh, one person had this card reverse, so I'm gonna reverse it back to you, plus I'll play the 10, right? So they, they'll do that what the rules say now to be in my defense the rules were downstairs i didn't feel like going back down to check out the rules and how they worked i just did what made sense to me uh which was that but what they actually say is so if i was to play this card and then the next person after me was to play this card you know i want them to play two cards well they play this they're not playing numbers so this doesn't affect them they've reversed it now i'm playing two cards so they've they've, they've just hit me back with it again uh, unless of course I play a card which you know if I played another card which was a reverse or another one of these then I wouldn't play the two and we go on to the next player and so on um, so you also have these these cards are minus 10 so just like you have a positive integer you have a negative integer so instead of adding 10 to the number you're subtracting 10 from the number and all the all the negatives are negative 10 that's the only one that's there and then you have these cards they're the dreaded curse these cards are just stuck in your hand. You can do absolutely nothing with them. So if this was my hand, then I would have basically three cards in hand because I can't do anything with that one. And if I get another one, then I've only got two cards. And if it ever gets to the point where you have four of these in your hand, that's, at that point, you can discard all four at the start of your turn and then play and then draw four new cards because there are a lot of them in the deck, a fair number. So it, it happened uh, to us in one of our games that we played. Okay, so let me let me get a, a deck set up here and I'll show you how it goes. So one, two, three, oh, it's not stuck together, four. All right, so everybody gets four cards. And as I say, you, you're playing the cards. So I'm gonna play a 10, right? And then draw back up to my four cards. This player goes, 
and they're going to play an eight. And this is what we would do is we would keep the tens up here. We'd have a running total of anything that's tens or grouped into a 10, we'd put into a separate sort of uh, row or column just to um, show that they are in groupings of 10. All right, and this player is going to go. Now, what we can do here, so the two could add to the 10, to, to the eight to make a 10. They go up now up to the 10. So now we have 10, 20. And it just made the, the adding of these numbers so much easier and rather than doing the running total. Okay, so then uh, I'd play another 10. And this player is going to, um, let's see. So they could play a zero. So they just say, I'm playing zero and put it straight into the discard because otherwise it has no other purpose or function. And then this player plays a 10, draws back up. I only have zeros, so I play a zero because I have to play something. And I don't want to play the negative 10 too early. And then this player is going to uh, play a three. So it goes down here. So 10, 20, 30, 43. And then this player is going to play a 10. So up to 53. I take my card. And now I'm going to play this card. Put it straight in the discard. Then the next player is going to have to play two cards. So we're up to 53. And they only have three cards. So they go back up there. So they'll play these two. They want to hold on to those. So 53, 55, 57. Okay, and the next player is another 10. 67. Uh, we got three cards. Uh, 67, uh, that's uh, 76, so 5, nine, 11, okay. Just looking for, sometimes you can make groupings of 20s. Now, if you make a grouping of 20, we kept them, you know, separate from the 10s, like the straight 10s, because then we could break those up. And I'll show you what I mean in just a moment. I'll, if I have to force the situation, I will. Um, and then this player plays a 10. Okay, you can't see all the 10s now because it's off camera. So 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 73, 75, 77, 84. We're getting close. Okay, this person has two cards. One, two, back to moi. Okay, so I take the one, nine and one, make a 10. Oh, let's put it visibly. So 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 83, 85, 87. Back to this player, 87, 94. So now it's getting spicy. 94, so again, we can take the three and the seven and create that to make it easier to see. So 94, this player is going to try and play. Um, if this is all they have was the two fives, then they wouldn't be able to play anything uh, and they would be out, but they have the minus 10. So in this case, what we do is we take the minus 10 and we take away a 10 from there. So that way we still have the correct running total of the orange cards. Right. So the game's gonna continue until such time that one player can't play. Let's just say I didn't have these minus 10s in my hand. I didn't have a zero. So let's just, I had big numbers in my hand. Then I'm out, I'm eliminated. Then it's down to these players. So let's just say they're going and then it's to a point where this player can't play, so they're eliminated, which means this player is left and they are now the winner. Now, one thing I want to show you, I said I was going to manipulate a situation here just to show something that um, we found as a useful tool, grouping tool for playing the game. So, um, 16, there we go. So if we had like 884 in the, in the thing here, Let's just pretend I don't have the twos in here. All right, if I have the eight, eight, four, what we would do is we would say, well, 12, 20. So we would know that's a 20. We'd keep it separate from the tens, but we'd keep it down here. So that way we could say 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90. Well, you know, obviously not going that high, right? But then at some point, if somebody played a two, what we do at that time is we would break apart this set to keep it groupings of tens as much as possible.
right? And we just found that was a very useful tool for, again, just the quick additions as we were constantly adding, re-adding the numbers. Um, also just how we can, it's just a great way to pull apart numbers and rework them in, you know, because those groupings of tens are so useful. And it's also very good practice for the students, so. But that is how you play Ono 99. Okay, so getting onto the report card um, for Ono 99, I'm going to give the number of players a B plus. It plays between two to seven players. Um, and actually, I think two players would be extremely lame. It wouldn't be fun at all. So I would, I would say three at the minimum. Uh, three to seven players. So, you know, two to four is sort of my stand for a B. So this is like a B plus. For learning for Ono 99, I'm going to give it a B. Uh, it's one of those games that's got good opportunities for doing, um, you know, your addition, subtraction facts and things, just a little bit of math, just sort of practicing something. It's one of the, it's a game that's going to be able to, if the kids, or, or kids, I say kids, but if the people playing, you can get people interested in playing, then they are going to be developing and building their math facts as you go. And as we played, I played with my family here a few times just to get ready for the video and found that we were doing some different things to as well that I didn't expect at first uh, with the, with the as I showed you before with the groupings and such like that. Uh, so that's, that was kind of neat to see. And because um, you know, my wife had suggested maybe just doing a, um, you know, tally, a running tally of numbers on a piece of paper. But I liked the idea of the, the you know, re-adding all the time and constantly just practicing the, the, that arithmetic. So, and we started to come up with those those things as I showed for, you know, how to deal with the cards to make things a little more manageable. But so, but the fact that you are doing those math facts practice is, is good. And, you know, so yeah, I'll give it a B. For fun for Owner 99, I'll give it a B. It's like your standard Uno game. It's, it's okay. It's, um, you know, just those kinds of strategies. You're trying to manipulate the situation, trying to make sure that you're passing off any detrimental effects to other people and just stay in the game as long as you can. Yeah, it's it's all right, so I give it the B. For time for Owner 99, um, what time? I, I actually didn't even look at the time it says on here. Uh, it says two to six plays. It doesn't say how long. I'll give it a B. I mean, it's, it's you know, it, it plays as long as you want it to play kind of thing. I mean, it's, it's uh, again, we were only playing with three players. Uh, so in a game of seven players, it might take a little bit longer, and I don't know if it's going to be kind of like unwieldy at that point. Cause sometimes with more players, you find these games can sometimes just take too long. And um, but also, I think once you, with with seven players, it's going to get up to ninety nine very quickly. So the, in that way, it's players are going to eliminate much faster. And the elimin although there is the elimination thing, and I mean the eliminations happen once you start to get eliminated, it's already close to the 99 that is just going to be like boom 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 people are limited so i don't see that as being a problem um for in terms of the fun sort of going back to the fun one and so yeah i think overall the game is you know quick you know as like i say quick as you want it to be so that's why i give it the b for cost for ono 99 i'm going to give it an uh, an a uh this game is only five dollars i got it at the dollar store the dollar rama near me um, I looked into local game stores around me, including Level Up Games. They don't carry it, but if I can get it at the dollar store for five dollars, I mean, how much cheaper am I expecting to get a game like this from like Level Up or some other things? I'm not. So I think five dollars is a great price for this, and especially seeing as it, you know, being that it's from Uno, I imagine that a lot of people are going to that's going to be sort of an in for some people. Oh, hey, want well, to play a game that's like Uno, like in the Uno family? Okay, let's play something a little bit different. You know. It's, it's, being similar to an Uno game will be that sort of tie-in for some people, so that will get them to want to play. So, and that's what it comes down to, right? I mean, like I said before, I always say in my videos, you know, it's about how much are you going to play the video? And even a $5 game, if you never play it or can never convince anybody to play it, then it's kind of, is it worth it? Well, I mean, this is a $5 game, and I think people are going to play it. I think it's a simple game to get people to play. So yeah, it's going to be worth it. I think you can definitely get your money's worth out of it. So I give it the A. And that's it for the report card. Let me take you to my final thoughts.
I got my little pug Fifi here. She wanted to join me for the final thoughts. So for Ono 99, I think this is a great game for the classroom. Uh, not only because of the... Well, first, for a few reasons. Let's just go into a few reasons. First reason is the cost. I mean, when you're doing games for a classroom, you want to make sure you're buying something that's not going to be super expensive because the, the tendency of kids to lose the pieces, destroy the pieces, whatever, is pretty high. So it's you don't want to buy anything too much. And so at a $5 game, which is going to accommodate seven people, it's great. Two, because it's a game that is, it's um, multifunctional in that you can play it as part of a thing to get kids to practice their math facts but it's also a good game to play during indoor recesses and stuff because it's again it's cheap it's easy to do the, the rules are very simple and so they can play it and while they're playing it they're also learning while they're playing so that's a, a big plus and then the final reason is because it's you know it has those educational components that are easy to see in the game and to you know you can find ways to incorporate them in the gameplay and into lessons and stuff in the classroom as a center or something that um, they, you know you can have the kids uh, learning as they play so for those reasons I think it's a great addition to a classroom and gets my stamp of approval well that's gonna be it for Ono 99 if you have any ideas for other games that you know of that would be good for the channel or ideas of topics you'd like me to talk about please let me know in the comment section below love to hear from the viewers love to get your thoughts on it and know um you know how i can be more helpful to you and uh yeah <laughs> i'm a little distracted by this face in the camera here but until next time i'm craig thompson Wood, your host on teaching with board games with fifi the pug saying thanks for coming to the classroom are you Coming back to school with